Good afternoon, everyone. We are live streaming currently on YouTube. John Glidewell? Yeah, here, here. John Dixon? Here, here. Marcus Magdaleno? Here, here. Travis Scott? Present, present. And Caitlin Schaefer from Planning and Building? I'd like to remind everyone to please mute themselves when they're not speaking so that we don't have any feedback. And let's go ahead and take note of the record there and our members of our public comment. Uh, present, present. So let's uh, move on to agenda item three, planning and building services. Caitlin, do you have any business or reports for planning and building services? Uh, planning and building services has nothing to report. Okay. Any committee moving on to agenda item four? Any communication needs to receive the file? No communications have been received. All right. And moving on to agenda item number five, five matters from the public. public. There is a members of the public present uh, that would like to um, address this board. I'll go ahead and take a moment to just say that uh, I feel uh, I feel confident that uh, that hopefully by the end of this meeting we'll have a final report approved by this board that can go before the board of supervisors to continue the process of getting uh, another year of an assessment to continue and uh, having you know, thoroughly reviewed the report I feel like at this point. Overall, the majority of the content uh, in the report is sound, it's accurate, it's thorough, and I think that has uh, in large part uh, to do with the work that the VMC executive director, Travis Scott, and the staff have done, the work that the MCTC board has done, and, um, and also the work that, of course, this board has done. So I just wanted to thank everybody for that. Public comment can be received through our PBS commissions at mendocinocounty.org email. And thus far, I have received no comments. Okay. Just for the clarification in this process, now that we're in a meeting, is there a minimum time that someone must submit public comment or for it to be addressed in this meeting? Uh, I will be monitoring the mailbox if you'd like me to report again at the end of the meeting if any public comment was received I can do that. Okay. Just All right so moving on to item agenda item number six on the agenda review and approve the draft annual report for the fiscal year 2020-2021. Um, my suggestion is that we just start going through the report page by page if any board members have any notes, uh, comments, uh, that we address them as we, as we quickly go through each page. Does that sound all right with you, John Dixon and John Gladwell and Travis Scott? Sounds John. good to me. This is John Gladwell. This is John Dixon, yes. May I make a suggestion, Marcus? Yes, you may, Travis. Uh, let's start with uh, the executive summary. <clears throat> And there is the original version that you sent to me is in the draft of the report. But uh, after I put it in the draft and posted it, I did make some changes and I thought we could all go through that together. 
since that's the first page and just get that done and knocked out and then we can go on with the rest of the report if that works for you. Certainly. So if um, I'm understanding this right, the executive summary in the report um, is not the most updated one with your edits. We'll be reviewing that on your share screen. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And I'm happy to, you know, I'm, um, I will honestly admit I'm not the best with um, writing and um, communicating my thoughts through words. So I'm happy to get any, um, any input um, or suggested edits from uh, staff or other board members regarding my executive summary. So that's why I brought it up first, because you had mentioned that to me. So I'm going to start a screen share now. Okay. Can I ask a question? I'm not sure if this is um, for now or not, but we we missed our meeting last, I guess, Friday or at some point. Maybe I've lost track. And can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, and I'm wondering where we are in the, in the process if we missed a deadline, because I think weren't we supposed to have done our work and then it would have gone to the MCTC board for comment and then go for approval to the county. And I, I guess because we missed a meeting, my question is, have we lost an opportunity and are we behind now? This is Mark Magdalena. To clarify, um, we did miss that meeting, um, the, but the report was able to go in front of the MCTC board for review and uh, they looked over it and um, I don't think we provided any, any input other than support. And um, as to the calendar of timing as to whether this report can and can get accepted and, and the bid can be approved prior to the start of the next fiscal year, I'll have to defer to either Travis or Caitlin on that one. So just, uh, Caitlin, I'm gonna jump in really quick. Uh, we had already missed our deadline to get uh, in front of the Board of Supervisors in April. So that has been pushed off to May. I don't be I believe it is the May 5th meeting, but that is off the top of my head and I could be mixing something else I have on their calendar. Caitlin, can you let us know what the dates look like moving forward? So in speaking with Adrian earlier today, she said that we may be able to still get on the consent calendar for the Board of Supervisors um, for May. And that way we can take it for public hearing in June. Perfect, thank you. I'd also like to remind everyone that during the share screen, the members of the public will not be able to see who is speaking. So if you could please say your name before your comment, it'll help our viewers. Uh, Marcus Magdaleno speaking. Uh, Caitlin, do you know the, the I always, I forget the, the window of timing before, between when the report is first Put on the agenda for the Board of Supervisors meeting, then there's the period of time for available protest, then there's the final approval of uh, the report and the bid. Um, and what is that window of time? Do you know? Is it 30 days, 45 days? To my knowledge, it's 30 days, Marcus. Okay. So Thank you, Travis. So if we, in fact, get this report um, done and to the Board of Supervisors uh, by one of their early May meetings, then we should be able to, uh, to still hit uh, our deadline prior to the end of June. Sorry. I believe that we'll make the May 19th meeting if we're able to approve um, this report today. And then the second meeting when the, the bid is renewed and the report is accepted would then be which June meeting? I do not know the date of the June meeting and I cannot guarantee that it's the 19th um, for May. Um, I just know that that'll be the next meeting um, with deadlines that we can meet. And Caitlin and Adrian and I will work together to get this uh, on the supervisor's calendar and make sure that we have a contract before the new fiscal year. Okay, wonderful. 
that is good to know. I'm just looking at the I'm just looking at the um, Board of Supervisors meeting calendar right now. And uh, in June, it looks like they have, um, if it is in, indeed presented to the board on May 19th, it would be um, one option in June, uh, according to their calendar right now, which would be the June 23rd meeting. That would be the, the last option to get this approved in time. So hopefully that will, that will be the case. Okay, um, John Dixon, was that a uh, good clarification for you on the, the timing of the calendar and everything? Yeah, I think so. Thank you, this is John. Thank you. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, do a review of the executive summary report. Um, I'll quickly state that um, I kind of just, you know, I, I looked at previous year's reports. There was a lot of uh, statistics and, and data. Uh, my mine is less data driven and more, um, I guess, tension and explanation. So um, happy to have any board members or staff give input or suggested edits. And Travis, it looks like you've already put in some suggested edits. Is that correct? Correct. And those would be the, the, the anything in red are things that I have changed, added, or deletions are listed over here. I have a question is John Dixon. Without comparing, I didn't pull it. Marcus, did you sort of start with the previous uh, executive summaries of previous years? And you said, and you're trying to follow sort of what their formats were, is that right? I, um, I overall didn't follow too um, specifically the formats of the previous years. Um, it seemed that uh, Wendy and previous chairs had um, I put in more data um, and more metrics in their executive summary, which I I didn't do on the, on mine. Uh, mine was more clarification of our intentions, our roles, our, um, our, our what we you know what we did, summarizing basically um, quickly the report, etc. So so no, I definitely didn't follow too much the structure of previous years and. I went my own route, roughly. I hey, got it. The only um, thing I see, mm -hmm. if they have any uh, substantive content, it's John Dixon again, uh, but in the, what is it, one, two, three, fourth uh, paragraph in the first sentence, bid it should be all capitalized, I think, B-I-D, ordinance, and ordinance is misspelled. Travis. Yes. I'm sorry, say that again. Um, two, three, four. Fourth paragraph, first line, bid, ordinance. Bid should be capitalized and ordinance is misspelled. Fourth, par fourth, fourth paragraph. paragraph. Oh, sorry. Uh, so first line, a history, bid, ordinance. Right there, bid should be capitalized. Ordinance has missing an I. This is John Glidewell, and I have a couple of suggestions on the document. If this is a good time. This is a good time. Go ahead, John Glidewell. Okay, thanks, Marcus. Um, First of all, the executive summary I liked that you wrote, Marcus, I thought you did a good job. And thank you for taking the time to put that together. Um, and Travis, I reviewed your changes and thanks for providing the track changes for the Word document. It's always helpful to see that. Um, I would move to accept all of the changes that you've made um, that have been tracked in red and we can either agree on those now and move on to my additional comments or I can continue on. Um, I just have a couple of notes for readability on some of the, the passages that I think will improve it slightly. Um, 
and we can start whichever one you want to do. Uh, Marcus, do you want to do accepting of the track changes now, or do you want to wait until I'm done with my comment? Uh, no, this is Caitlin ahead. from Planning and Building. We do not need a motion to accept this. Uh, there's only one item on the regular calendar, and that is the approval of the draft. Okay, that's thanks, correct, Caitlin. Caitlin. Uh, Marcus Magdaleno here. Yeah, this is um, this is really just to getting board input on my my work here and uh, in writing this, and so I guess it would only just take me. Um, accepting your edits and instructing Travis to, to make the changes as he's in control of the document. So so let's go ahead and uh, hear your suggestion, John Glidewell, and um, and then at the end I'll uh, I'll clarify as to which edits and suggestions I'll um, add to it. Yeah, great. Okay, this is John Glidewell. My first suggestion is in the second paragraph and um, the second sentence that starts with the new um, line, Mendocino County Tourism Commission, executive director and staff are responsible for the majority of compiling the information and producing the report in its current format. Uh, I just thought that the word compiling was uh, a little bit off. So I think it should read, um, executive director and staff are responsible for compiling the majority of the information and producing the report in its current format just for um, readability. I thought it sounds better to, to move that word. Sounds good. Continue. Okay, the third paragraph, um, the last sentence is, is four lines or about thereof, uh, a little over four lines. I thought we could, uh, it kind of seems like a run on. I thought we could uh, use a period break there after the, the word balances. Um, so the the way that it currently reads is this report is part of the fully transparent process which allows for tourism promotion under a structure that provides multiple sources of information and a strong set of checks and balances to assure that the funds generated by the bid self-assessment and the 50 percent county match are used equitably and most effectively to promote tourism um, i'm recommending that we put a period after the word balances and continue the sentence that will go with this process assures and then the rest is the same, that the funds generated uh, by the bid of self-assessment, et cetera. I like that. Continue. This is Caitlin. Um, if I could interrupt for just a moment, uh, Travis, could you please increase the size um, of your document? It's difficult to read on the stream. Is that large, is that large enough? Uh, there will be a slight delay before I'm able to see it. Um, it's a little bit bigger, but it is not yet legible. Thank you, Travis, that's better. Okay. This is John Gladwell. Marcus, if you're okay with that, I'll continue. Yes, please continue. Before okay, you, you go, sorry, this is John Dixon. Can you go back up? Um, the word is supposed to be assures. If you go back up, Travis. Thank you. Thanks, John. My last note is the last paragraph, and I will this is just my um, reading the, the sentence there, and I think it's nice that you mentioned um, the second sentence, Mendocino County and the rest of the world are currently in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. I think, I just like saying at the time of this writing, comma, Mendocino County and the rest of the world are currently in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. And then removing the at this time from the, the following sentence. Um, since the word time is is written uh, several times throughout that passage, I just thought it reads a little more stronger, but um, that is my nitpicking and totally not necessary. It's up to you guys how you look at that. Wait, so just for clarification, first sentence is altered in any way? No. no, first sentence stays the same. Second okay. sentence starts with at the time of this writing, comma, and then the rest of the sentence remains the same. 
Okay, and then uh, let's see here. At the, at the time of writing, Mendocino County and the rest of the world are currently in the midst of a pandemic. It is uncertain, and then we can, re we can remove at this time, so it is uncertain just how much of an effect. Was that one of your suggestions as well? Yep, exactly. And yeah, then the remainder. How much of an effect of this pandemic, how much of an effect this pandemic will have for the residents, business, and economy? My one question for the three of you is that, you know, is mentioning residents, business, and economy um, enough? Is there anything that needs to be added? Or I didn't. This is John Glebel. I didn't have any notes to add anything else. I think it sounded fine. Okay. Continue with your other suggested edits. That was it. That was all of them. Okay. Hey, uh, Travis, second line, I think he said at the time of this writing, the word this is missing. Thank you, John. Thank you. The time of this writing. At the time. That's uh, clear for the all of you? At the time of this writing, Mendocino County. I mean, you could take out the word currently, so it's not redundant. At the time, there's writing Mendocino County and the rest of the world are in the midst. Yeah, I like that. This is your summary, Marcus, and you can certainly <laughs> veto that suggestion if you're not comfortable with it. So no, no, no uh, it, um, feelings like are I, on my side. Marcus Magdaleno, like I said, uh, uh, I am not, writing is not my strong suit. So, uh, if that sounds good to you, at the time of this writing, Mendocino County and the rest of the world are in the midst of a COVID-19 pandemic. Right. It's for me, I I like the change uh, because when things are moving quickly and every day the news changes, obviously this is going to sit for a year and it won't be, it'll be outdated soon enough. But I think to, to just acknowledge sort of that by saying at the time of this writing, this is the this is where we are, you know, it just sort of underscores that um, things are changing all the time. And so for me, it's kind of a typical way to sort of address that, that, you know, uh, whether it's a news article or something like this, but, you know, or something like this that we're doing that has a longer shelf life. Um, I think it's, I think it's a good practice. So it's a good change for, for me anyway. Great. Thank you, John Dixon. Um, John Dixon or John Gladwell or Travis, do you have any other suggested comments or, or suggested edits or comments? No, sir. Okay. Oh, great. Well, I, um, I am happy to adopt all of your suggested edits, um, and um, I appreciate your assistance with helping me improve upon my um, executive summary. All right, and moving on, I imagine uh, as we go through this, um, as this is our attempt to, I guess, fine tune this report, that we are looking at everything, not just content to improve upon, but also specifics like punctuation and grammar and whatnot. Is that correct, Travis? Yes, please. Okay. And if, John Dixon, if I'm not wrong, uh, Travis, this is the first time we're seeing some of, like, the appendix and some of the um, charts and things like this, right? That is correct. This version. So this, yeah, there's some new stuff besides the executive summary that we haven't seen, and, uh, and this will be the last time, too. So, so what is new that you have not seen is the table of contents. Uh, the one chart with the pie graphs that represents uh, DMAI spending against VMC spending. And can we, Travis, the, can you hold for one moment the smart spending? Little. Can we actually just, um, can we go through the report with, uh, you know, page by page? And, and Travis, you um, uh, let us know if anything's, what's changed since we've last seen it or what's been added. Sure, absolutely, no problem. Whatever's easiest for you, for you guys. I think that's going to be the most efficient way um, to go through this report, especially making sure we don't miss anything or pass through anything. So let's, um, oh, let's start with page 
one, um, I had a question about like actually the title page. Um, we list one unseated um, spot on this board, but not the other. We've got our at large. Ah, Rex, there is an inland seat available. Thank you. Right. Um, So Travis, it might be best if you actually screen share the report so we can see the changes and edits sure. that you'll be making. I'm just, what I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm happy to do that. What I am doing is I'm just making notes on the PDF, um, but I'm happy to share. One moment. Okay. <laughs> this is this is maybe just a nitpicky thing, but um, why the two separate lines for uh, for each designation? You know, it just came out that way. I'm not sure what happened with this formatting. If you want me to try to mess with the formatting again, I'm happy to. Um, it was just not cooperating with me. Okay, it's probably some sort of text window limitation. Uh, if it's an easy fix, we do it. I, I'm fine with yep. doing it. If it's not, at this point, I say, um, you know, it's, as, a, as the content is the most important thing, that we just continue to move forward. Sure. Would everybody uh, let me know if I've listed their property names uh, accurately? Uh, mine should be, John Dixon, should be Glenn Devon Inn and Lodge. And then we do an ampersand for the and. Thank you. And Travis, this is John Glidewell. Um, I've been using Beachcomber Hotel Group. If uh, that works for you. That's perfectly fine. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well, since we're at it, uh... Okay, you might as well put the in front of the Boonville Hotel. <laughs> the Boonville Hotel. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, so the table of content is something we're seeing for the first time. Um, am I unmuted? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, go ahead, John Dixon. So under 5 or V5, D, matching fund D. I think it's supposed to be matching fund. Typo there. Ah, thank you. And I printed out this page so that I'm going to go through as we go through and make sure that the just um, proof check on uh, the actual pages as we go through. So mm -hmm. I did that several times. I had them pasted all over the walls in my office. <laughs> Thank you, though. I appreciate everybody's yeah, attempt absolutely. at thoroughness. I saw something else on the executive summary um, on my screen when I still had it. Can I, does anybody know, can I switch between my when we're screen sharing, I don't know if I can get back to my, I don't know if it matters, but um, let me see. Ordinance again, first line. Oh, no, we, that's the one we, I don't know, that's yeah. a different, we didn't fix that yet, did we? This, the executive summary has been done. This is the original version, so just toss that out. We're going to paste the new one in. Okay. Okay. John Dixon, did you want to see it really quickly again? Travis, you yep. still have that? Yes, please. And John Dixon, you should be able to see both this and your screen if you minimize, not completely, but if, I'm sorry, if you reduce your window. I'm not sure if you're on a PC or Mac. That's yeah, a PC, but. So now what we see is this one that was meant to be, yeah, there we go. There's spell check function because I'm just seeing that. I wonder if there's other things. I'm gonna run the spell check there. Okay. 
Okay. So, and then... Bear with me a second. I thought I saw something else in this version. Could it perhaps be the last sentence of the first paragraph? As that might be a run-on sentence and can be formed in the two? No, it was other things. It was, I think, like Mendocino County Tourism Commission and the two second words weren't capitalized, but it could have been on the other version. So, mm. no content related thing. I'm okay. I don't see it here now. Well, now you got me wondering, uh, my last sentence of the first paragraph is a, is a run on. After uh, forthcoming your prediction goals, standards, and guidelines, comma, or no comma, or period, it also provides recommendations actionable. No, 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 actually, no, I'm sorry. Now I'm reading the whole sentence. Looks fine. That's fine. Yeah, come on. Okay, back to the table of contents. That's fine. I don't have anything else. This is John Glad. We'll have a comment on the table of comments, uh, <laughs> table of contents again. Um, looking at number seven or VII, just that um, orange header. There's the number 20 after it, which is out of line with the rest of the yeah it's, so is three hmm. um there's let me hey Yeah, I think we're okay to move on. Yep. This marks my Milano. Let's move on. We've uh, looked at the directive summary. And um, I'll let Travis um, make comments as we go through. <clears throat> so uh, the only things that have changed in this are in this report are the changes requested at the last meeting uh, on this page. I don't know how fast or slow you want me to go, so you're gonna have to kind of give me uh, give me a pace here, Marcus. <laughs> okay. Um, oh wait, can you stop and go go back up to? Um, I mean, it's hard to see where the section. Uh, okay. No, I'm sorry. No, this is not where my question is. I have a question, John Dixon. So this is the same. What we're looking at now is the same as what we were. What was in the packet, correct? Correct. Okay. Oops. Okay. Wait. Hold. Sorry. Oh, um, can we go to section, oh, where's the cheese? Part two, section C. Can you give me the page number, Marcus? It's much quicker. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, six, page six, sorry. Thank you, thank you. Second dotted point, we just need to remove the parenthesis after the 50%. Uh, thank you. And then I presume uh, regarding this, nothing has changed since the last time you've seen it. Nope. Okay. I'm down passing the organization, organizational chart. Uh, nothing has changed in the organizational chart. Nope. Any changes to uh, overall goal and strategic objectives? Nope. No changes to section B. And you said these graphs were new? These are new since the last meeting, yes. And a comparison of the DMO average and visit Mendocino County. Mm -hmm. Continue.
have a question on that last chart, John Dixon. Um, I think it's 2017 data. Is that the, I guess, the most That's, recent? That is the most recent study, yes. Oh, wait, stop. Uh, uh, Travis, I have a question about three, section three, item C. Can you bring that? To... Can you give me a page number? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yes, page eight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay. Okay, so uh, accomplishments of fiscal year 18, 19. This is listed because these are the accomplishments of, mo of the most recent year completed, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, then we do have a spot later on where it gives an update of the current fiscal year's accomplishments, correct? Correct. Yeah, okay. So wanted to confirm. Thank you. Oh, there's a typo in the second sentence I have noted. Yeah. In, on page eight? See, yeah. Section this is a note I made um, previously, but it's a typo second sentence. Uh, oh, it should be made clear, not I should be made clear. Uh, yes. John Dixon here. I have a question here on the um, chart that we're looking at. Um, the ad equivalency, I mean, is way off the charts on what was the goal and then the actual. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> well, yeah, the percentages is crazy. I mean, they're all high. It's good. I mean, it's good news. But is but can you talk about it a little bit? Like, sure. So. Um, the reason impressions and ad equivalency are so outrageously high is both of those come into play when the words Mendocino, county, visit, any of those keywords come in. And with the uh, PSPS and the fires, this has happened three years in a row now, uh, those two, the tracking just gets incredibly blown up from all the little mentions that happen of those things. I see. I wonder if we should footnote that, you know, because, you know, if ad equivalency was projected at 6.6 .6 and it would say 8.6, we'd say great. But when it's 86, there's clearly something going on that, and I, and I also, it sounds like from what you're saying, there's no way to filter out what was something talking about the Mendocino complex fires versus what was actual marketing PR or PR in this case. Is that right? There's no Correct. way to. Yeah. I, I feel like that needs a, a footnote, just like an asterisk and then right below the chart stating, you know, impressions and ad equivalency are skewed due to those three terms that you mentioned, you know, being mentioned in the news based on, uh, well, in this year, I guess it was just the, the fires. Hey. Can you talk about too, and I don't want to get into too much detail here with my questions at this point, but FAM programs, I know are familiarization programs, those are also quite high, um, actually it would be more than double, it says it's only 200%, but uh, and anyway, media missions, what's the difference between a FAM familiarization program and a media mission? Media missions are generally larger groups of media all traveling together, um, right. and those can be done either in the county or outside of the county. So, like often, you know, in the past, um, I'm just going to use this as a historical reference that most people will remember, Mark and Heather would go to New York 
on a media mission every year. Got it. Okay. Now we go to we do Los Angeles, and this next year we're hoping to do Denver. So that that's what media missions are. Okay. This is Marcus Magdaleno. Um, John's comment brought up something that I was curious about, uh, and you might have mentioned. I'm sorry, I was distracted for a moment. Uh, wh what is the unit of measure for your addict equivalency? Like a mention, uh, a mention is about is what unit of value that you that gets you to the so that would be really nice to answer, but it's something that's produced by Burrells and Burrells Loose, which is an ad clipping service that we uh, uh, subscribe to. And it's really hard to understand how they quantify that. I've asked Colleen uh, from Coley Communications to help me decipher that, and it's really difficult to decipher. So I, I couldn't even begin to give you an answer on that. Okay. Um, I would just suggest that maybe it'd be a, a future goal to, to continue with that, trying to um, be able to quantify it and list that in the future in future reports, so people can somewhat understand yeah. how we got to that number. Right. I, I, and I totally understand that, Marcus, because I wanted to understand it myself. Uh huh. Um, and so you know, I may have to reach out to other PR um, firms and see if they can quantify that, but. Burrells can't even give me the equation that they use to quantify it. Hmm. Okay, uh, continuing on. Sorry, this is John Gladwell. My microphone was muted. Um, just following up on John Dixon's comment about the year over year percentage uh, for FAM programs. I think that one should be, should that one be 300% instead of 200%? Yes. Okay. Thanks, Travis. John Dixon here. On this page too, I see CSF, and I know I think that means theory SF. Mm -hmm. um, and I just did it on my, on my version. I figured out how to go to my other version. I did a search and find for theory SF. I didn't find it. So I'm I trying to answer my own question that meaning is that sure. acronym finder? And do we need to, I just like these things to be clear and stand on their own always. And you probably heard me have this kind of comment before. Yeah, we no, start, that's an easy fix. Uh, sorry, I tried to fix all those uh, before you guys got this. I missed theory, my apologies. Okay, all right. And Travis, this is John Gladwell. It's it's correct that there will will still be a glossary at the end of the report. Uh, we did not have a glossary last year. I can put one in again if you'd like. I well, I don't know if we've really talked about it too much. Maybe we have, but I always like to see those in case I missed where it was defined the first time in the in the article, or if I'm skimming and I'm looking at the recommendations. And I see an acronym that I'm not familiar with. It's it's nice to be able to reference the glossary. So I would vote for it. Um, I don't know what what are your guys' thoughts? Marcus Magdaleno. Um, yeah, thank you for bringing that up, John. I actually, as a strong advocate for having it, previous years didn't catch that this year um, until now as well. And um, and I agree. I think the the most we the best we can do. You know, obviously the board of supervisors are going to read this report, um, hopefully thoroughly. But also, this is on record for any member of the public, and I'd like to make it as, as interpretable as possible, um, being someone who isn't heavily familiar with metrics of advertising and marketing and, and um, equivalencies of, of, of advertising and stuff, whatnot, um, definitely finds a glossary of um, terms that aren't typically used uh, a good reference. So I know it's a little late in the game to, um, to try to add it now. I don't know if- No, it's very, it's very simple. I've already got the template created. I just didn't add it because we didn't add it last year. So it's a super easy add-on for me to put on as an appendix. Yes, please. Um, let's go ahead and do that uh, if our other two board members are in agreement. This is John Gladwell. Thank you, Travis. Yeah, that would be nice. And, and Marcus, thanks for agreeing. That's, uh, I think that's gonna be helpful. Yeah, I, I agree too, John. Thanks, Travis. Not a problem. 
So are we going to be able to have a quick look at that once we get down to the uh, appendix items? Uh, yeah, sure. It's not, I mean, all I have is the template created. I don't have the information put into the template. Oh, oh uh, we don't have a, you don't have one from previous. I mean, I, I've got, I've got two years ago, I could pull up on the screen and if that is okay, we can use that one. Yeah, let's take a look at that when we get to it and see if um, we all feel comfortable with that one. As I, don't, I, I can't imagine a lot of the terminology has changed or been altered. Okay. All right, so let's move it on. Go wait, hold for one second. Go back up, please. So is this, this in fact, uh, sorry, right here, section D on this page, at the bottom of the page, year to date progress oh. should be 1920? Should be 1920, thank okay. you. I'm sorry, continue. Um, under staffing, sorry, the, if you go up to John Dixon, um, operations and staffing. What page, John? Sorry. Oh, let's see, 11. Okay. okay. Um, Allison's um, position isn't the, the, the change of, of sort of um, what am I trying to say? One of the positions that Allison Degrassi held uh, is not going to be refilled. And, and here we don't talk about that. And, and this is actually from 2018. But then, should we talk about any other changes that happened in? Or recently, staffing. That's up to you guys if you like. Um, yeah, it's completely your call. I suppose if we did go that route, uh, not it wouldn't be uh, specific. It would be just titles of positions. Uh, say uh, this title position was. Um, this role was was removed and with the intention of of um, distributing its responsibilities here and here and here, I suppose would be the proper route to go on that one. If we wanted to, uh, do, did was that so, part of the strategic plan of of that decision? So to, uh, I I can't because it's speaking about a position and the terms that happened behind that. I can't speak to that. Um, the position is not completely eliminated, but the position is not being filled at this time. And if I'm correct, in this report, in the past, this report hasn't provided information as to specific staffing um, of the BMC staff. It's more of its organizational structure and responsibilities. Right. Well, except that in this case, uh, in this paragraph, there it specifically says the name of a person, and it's also I think out of date. I was, 2018 is listed here, and it feels like, unless I'm unless I'm wrong, that's not in the years that we want to be reporting on. This is a 2021 annual report, and we're talking about what happened would be 19 and 20, if anything. Well. So it's interesting because the report is written partially on a fiscal year basis and partially on a calendar year basis. 
it kind of straddles a bit of both, um, which is difficult, but that's kind of how it's been written in the past as well. So I went back to December 18, um, because, yeah, so I, I mean, because this that had not been reported in a previous report. Got it. And I see right below that, it's a year-to-date progress for 1819 on public relations and other things like that. So I see. Um, no, that's been corrected, John. Marcus Magdalena here, that should be 1920. 1920, correct. You're not able to make that quick edit, Travis? So well, we can... it's in a PDF format right now. I've got oh, my okay. notes to gotcha. make, all the notes are happening over here. And I will make those changes as soon as we're not. Because I don't want, if I make them in a word and things start formatting differently, and then we're all sitting here watching me try to keep formats together. <laughs> I know, I know just um, the important thing is that, um, that any notes, I mean, if we're gonna look at a final version of this, that either the edits be made now prior to the reporting or that we trust that you've taken good notes of the edits and approve the report with your, with, you know, with, with the, our suggested edits to be applied later when you are, when after this meeting's over. So, um, so that'll be just what we'll have to do, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I think what we'll do at the end, if everybody's comfortable with it, is approve it as as is with amendments, and then just turn, go through and and we can see his notes. What he's we're going to be doing. I'm, I'm going to be fine with that. I'm sure. I'm I'm still a little bit stuck on um, what as we read forward. Then what window? What time frame window? This is meant to be. And it sounds like Travis because this hasn't been reported on before about the new position that you mm -hmm. want to include it. It does, to the other point we were discussing, say a specific name of a person, which maybe we want to remove for that same reason. Um, sure. and, and the date, the specific date that's in there also flagged me. Otherwise, if we just kind of kept it generic, frankly, saying in this period, the new position was created, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. reason, and it was filled. So you can just see. You, you know, then it's, it's reported and, you know, or even, um, makes it less specific on both points. Um, hey. they're just and this is Marcus Magdaleno. I'm in agreement with um, those two edits suggested by the new John again, but I'll okay. be right back. Okay. Thank you. Sure. And uh, to add to that, sorry, John Dixon just, uh, yeah, it yeah. sounds like we've just set a running precedent of, um, of this report structured in a way that it reports on the last completed fiscal year um, and then reports on an update of the current fiscal year. So then next year's report will report again on um, on the, the, the 1920 fiscal year, but it'll be a report on that com full completed year versus our update thus far of that year. Um, and I, I think that's just gonna be the running structure that exists as we continue, as this board and this report continues on through the years. Okay. So continuing on. Hold for a second. Travis, this is Marcus Magdalena. I have a comment on, or a note on 5B, clarify multiple. Page number. <laughs> Hold on, I should have written. <laughs> 5B, 5B would be, wait a second. Oh, and we, I think we passed that off. Page 14. Page 14, 5B, clarify multiple. Okay, but I didn't get specific on. Hi. Hi, B, you're here. Okay. And my note says clarifying multiple. Uh, let's see where, uh, sorry, I didn't get more specific than that. So just so you know, this is taken completely directly from the, from the county. Yeah, from the county. From the county. So this is part of things that we don't change. Okay, good to know.
So John Dixon here, a couple, two things. Should we leave it in italics for any reason, or do you want to make it like the rest of the text? I mean, I don't know if that was purposeful or, or not. It's just a format thing. Uh, it's, uh, it's been in italics the last few years, so I just kept it that way to, because that's how it was. But I'm happy to change it if, if you guys are right that. Was that telecized because it is a, oh, a county no. code? or no That's why I didn't see um, um, no, no, it. No, I, 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 I don't know the history of why it was. Long before my time. Okay, well, if we have no specific reason to know why it's a telecized, then yeah, I suggest we make it the same format as, as um, the rest of the text. I'd agree with that, just for... The other comment I had, um, and it's in a couple of places, and the page before had one, um, page 11, I think. There's some links in here, um, which obviously when it's printed don't work. Um, but I'm wondering if they will, yeah, like that one. I wonder if they will be live, like when somebody looks at it on a screen and it's a PDF, does something like that link out? It sure does. And it's going there right now. Yeah, okay, got it. Great, so when this document lives on the website, um, those links yes. are Yes, those links are live. Now I lost where I was at, hold on, sorry guys. There we go, okay. So yeah, in the print form, of course, they're not live, but even in PDF, we've linked them to be to be live links. Okay. And let's continue on. And Travis, hold for one second. Estimated bid assessment revenue for fiscal year 18-19. Thank you. That's uh, that's going to read 20. Oh. Wait. You're right. Wait, is that going to read this current fiscal year or is that going to read upcoming fiscal year? 2021. And just remind us all, the board, how how you determined. Um, oh wait, is this reporting the budget? Yes. Um, this estimated bid revenue was determined. How? So it's basically it's uh, estimated on a, by the finance committee. They decide a number for me to work with for the year. And this year it was it was uh, a percentage reduced, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. What was that so percentage reduced? Two percent. Uh, three percent. Three percent. Um, do we note that anywhere else? Anywhere here in this report? No, not that I recall. John or John, do you feel that we need to? But again, again, until we know the end date of the SIP, we don't know the exact percentage that we're going to be reducing it. That number may change, and we may have this all amended. Of course, and an agreement. But we've got a number here that we say we're estimating currently on, and just the metrics of how we got to that number. You know, um, saying basically. We took last year's full completed amount, or we took the last 12 months of, of or last four quarters, and then reduced that amount by 2%, 3%, what'd you say, 3%? Three, three. Um, I don't know, if I was if I was a lodging owner and was reading through this, I kind of, that's something that would I personally would want clarified. John, John, do you have any input on that? I think. Uh, uh, go ahead, John. Oh no, thanks, John. This is John Gladwell. I was just going to say I, I don't really have um, I don't have any feelings one way or the other. I'm happy to uh, go with your suggestion, Marcus, but I I don't know. It, it didn't jump out at me. Okay. 
and it hasn't been in and i'm happy to add it but it hasn't been in any of the past reports either okay seeing as it hasn't been in the past reports um, and that information can be gained through public record via the um, mctc finance committee and board um, i guess there isn't a heavy heavy need to have it listed here This is John Gladwell. I have one more note for page 16 on the top of the page. Uh, number nine, it looks like the note below the number it should be um, not indented. Thank you. Yeah, yeah no problem. And then I wonder if we should spell out um, fiscal year 2020-2021, which seems to be the format for the rest of the report. Or just F, you know, FY 2020 dash 2021. Yeah. Um, in this case, should the word organizations be possessive with an apostrophe there? Travis, I have a question here. This is Marcus Magdaleno. Just to clarify, uh, the wording right here that's on the screen. Um, actually, sorry, scroll up to the previous page. It's the last. So the cap on Mendocino County Mendocino is entitled to charge an amount equal to its actual costs for the collection of assessment and administration. The cap of this fee is 3% of the total countywide bid assessments. Right, so that applies just to the bid assessment, not to the match. Correct. So my concern, or my question is then, is the, scroll down to the budget, is the county fee estimated in the budget correct? Or am I missing something? It looks like it's based on the Me, it seems based on the the, the match, the, the assessment and the match. Whereas if it was based just on the assessment, it would be yeah, it would be twenty-seven, oh ninety-seven, ninety-two. Yeah. So I'm curious, um, Emory, are we interpreting that that code correctly? And we are interpreting that code correctly. That was a slip of my calculations. And are we one hundred percent sure the county isn't billing in accordance? To no, that. yeah, we we that was just an error, Marcus, in, in my calculations going okay. too fast. Uh, the county and I are very close in, in how we bill, so okay. um, I just, just added that. Just curious, is Marcus Magdaleno again? Uh, what was the uh, county administrative free for the last fee for the last completed fiscal year? Do you have oh, any? Uh, have to go into QuickBooks and I can't do that with the screen share. Okay. No, no, I was just, if it was handy, I was curious, but it's not. Important. It was, it was 1.8% was the, was the percentage that she charged us the last fiscal year, but I can't remember what actual number that is. Okay. It's not bad. That'd be somewhere in the realm of $1,600. No, that doesn't seem like it. Yeah, $16,000 if, if it's roughly near the same bid estimate. Okay, let's continue on looking at the budget. And for clarification, the uh, contingency fund is based on 10% expenses or the income? 
ten percent of the budgeted uh, expenses. Expenses. Or, or excuse me, yes. But that budgeted expense does not include the county fee. Correct. Okay. All right, moving on. And now we are to the review of the recommendations from uh, presented for the 1920 fiscal year. Um, Travis, did we make any changes? Or can you just scroll through and, and note? No changes have been made to this since the last meeting. All the changes that have were made were made during the last meeting. Okay. And and applied applied then or applied after? They were made during the meeting. Okay. I've seen has been no change to that. I'd say we move on to the twenty twenty one items as these are our current oh. ones i say we um we i just caught something i need to change add and as, as these are our most um, current ones that we developed uh together as a board i say we take a little bit more time to look through and review them um I'll, i'm just going to call out set recommendation by recommendation and if you guys have any comments um make them so just to, just to make sure I'm in the right spot, we're on page 21, uh, section A, correct? Recommendations actionable by MCTC? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so, gentlemen, do you have any comments or questions regarding any of the seven recommendations actionable by the County of Mendocino Tourism Commission? If you need a moment to quickly review or... or or if you have none, um, please voice your voice your comments. Marcus, this is John Gladwell. <clears throat> I uh, don't have any objections. I read through them again, and um, feel pretty comfortable with where they are at. All right, John Dixon. Any questions or comments regarding? Uh, yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, we spent a lot of time on these, and I think um, I read through it, and it uh, looks like everything's there. Great. Moving on to Section B. Any questions or comments or input regarding the recommendations actionable by the County of Mendocino for 2020-2021 fiscal year? Looks like maybe just some spacing edits. Yeah, this is John Gladwell. Looks like, Travis, you've caught that one for number five. Uh, did we agree that... that number one and two should be butted up against each other like that or should there be a space in between those two items there should be a space thank you no problem and then i did notice that comparing this b with up on the up above page number 21 sections a and b um, looks like the headers are formatted a little bit differently so you have the header um and then yeah. a little intro introduction i just wanted to catch that Continuing on to the appendixes. This is this appendix oh. provided by the county. Is that correct? Yes. Can, can I just make a comment here? It might be the time to do it. And John I Dixon be... speaking. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Go ahead, John Dixon. All right. So going back up then to these recommendations, I, you know, when I looked at it this time, the only difference between the sections. You know, we have it, we know what it is, actionable by MCTC and then actionable by the county. And then there's um, the second A and B, which are the only difference 
is that it's the years. And I think, and, you know, we don't have to do this, take it for what you want, but the, the bullets under the 1920 years, I almost feel like the bullet should say what it is. And it's either status update or, or you know, response. We used that word before. But to, to sort of say what the bullet below is, it, it doesn't say that in the title. It doesn't really say what we're doing there. All it does is say these are the, it's trying to say just by the date that these are the ones from previous reports and this is the, re, the response or like it's, they're status updates, the sub bullets that is. And I frankly think they should, it should say at each one in all caps, status update, colon, and then in the first one, A1, you know, sub bullet, the executive director began, the, the MAI, et cetera, et cetera. Like for the section that's, 19 and 20, what's pertinent in this report is the status update, the bullets. And it's just not super clear um, because, again, the only difference between the two sections is the date, 1920 and then 2021. And I don't, almost don't think it's clear enough. Um, so that would be a suggestion I would like to see if you guys agree with that we could add. Marcus Magdaleno here. Um, I'm in agreement with that. Anything to make this more this report more clear to um, any of the stakeholders or lodging owners that will be that could potentially read it, and to the board of supervisors, I'm all for. And you make a good point that um, that seems a valid thing to instead of a dot bullet to say progress thus far or status update or um, response to this to this recommendation. And actually, now now that I'm thinking about it, I would be amenable to. Um, these 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 two sections that were from the 1920 fiscal year um, be titled maybe instead of recommendations actual by county tourism commission 19 2019 2020 review of recommendations uh, or review of previous recommendations actual by the county that would make it uh, in my opinion even more clear. John Gladwell, do you have any input on this? Yeah, this is John Gladwell, and I agree with John's recommendation. I, I think I remember first reading the report uh, long ago when I started looking at these bullet points, thinking um, after reading them, oh yeah, now I understand what they are. But it would be good to be uh, yeah, more clear. But I, Marcus, I didn't really understand your suggestion on um, identifying them. Are you saying? So replace the bullet point with that, um, you know, with that title or review of, of number one or review of number two or whatever, or are you saying putting that into the section header or what do you think? Uh, sorry, I wasn't clear on that, the header. So right there where it says A dot recommendations actual by county that we, we, we potentially change it to say, you know, item A, review of recommendations actionable by Mendocino County Tourism Commission. So there's that point, and then there's John's point to um, to actually put a title under the bullet points. So let's start with John's point of of. Can I, inter can I interject with John Dixon? Sorry. Go ahead, John Dixon. Yeah. So it might already be here. If you look, I, again, I have this uh, table of contents printed out, and section six and section seven are what we're talking about here, and they actually have a title on the table of contents, but not in the actual document. So first is DI or six for page 19, it's A and B listed, but the title in the table of contents says actions taken in response, which is title, it's a typo by the way, the response, the fifth year 1920 bit advisory board recommendation. So there, again, it's correct in the table of contents, but what we're missing here are the headers on the section. So it should be section six VI, and then pull the title from the table of contents. That helps delineate where we are, but I would still on the sub bullets say, you know, response, because that's what the title of this thing is, or no, or whatever, status update. I kind of like the status update better for the bullet. Each time there's a bullet, say bullet status update colon, and then the then, then the text. 
This is John Gladwell. I think that really clears it up. I agree to, um, like you said, John, carry over from the table of comments. So that section just uh, is easily to or easy to find and identify. And then I like the word status update too to replace the actual bullet. Um, I think that would be really nice. Uh, Marcus, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I'm, um, as you pointed out, John, for consistency, I definitely like retitling the section A and section B to match the table of contents to be actions taken. Um, and since it says action taken, instead of status update for the bullet points, why not stat, Why not just say action taken? And then- So just to be clear, the A and B sections, if you go back or on your own, or if Travis wants to go back, I would do it on your own. And you look at the table of contents, the A and the B on page 19 are correct. I'm not suggesting change, changing the bolded thing that's already there on the page showing shared thing. What's missing is the orange title to the entire section, which is section, it would, should be section VI, and it would say, and it says, actions taken in response to fiscal year. So just to be clear about that, we're not changing the A and B titles. Okay. Your point, even though we're gonna be saying, or putting the title, actions taken in response to fiscal year 1920 bid advisory board recommendations, okay, I would still, leave the bullet and after the at the bullet say status update in all caps colon and then leave the text here so you're going to see status update under where there's a bullet not a place of the bullet but where the bullet is i just think that makes it really clear i'm amenable to that this is john gladwell i totally agree that sounds great and just to add to that uh for carrying down um from the table of contents, that main header on the page, top of page uh, 19. Then on 21, we should carry down the next header, which also lives right. in the table of contents. Yeah, so it would go between the, the fiscal year's recommendations. Right, so you get then A, B, and then you get the uh, section seven, it should be there anyway, and then A, B. Yes, that sounds. Thank you for catching that, John Dixon. And to match, just Travis, here to match, it would be one of those main orange bolded all caps titles, right? So like right. the other, like. Okay, great. So we've got of that change and it's clear for everybody of those two changes I should say yeah I'm scrolling back up thank you yes I think yes um, if I go back up in the document the last title I see that's matching the um, five is also missing I mean, I'm sorry second. John John Dixon you you broke up can you repeat that again yeah, the last section uh, that has the IV or four is there with the correct formatting, but then the next from the table of contents, section five, um, is not in the document as it is in the table of contents. Can Which you give me a page number? Well, it's supposed to be 14. Here, let me just look. Oh, so it's there. Preliminary plan for fiscal year on page 14 just needs to be titled V or, or five rather V period. Yep. Good catch. Caitlin, just FYI, I'm not able to mute my my sound. Yeah, mine's gone. My mute has gone away as well. It's there, it just won't take it. Hmm. Uh, I don't know where that problem lies. I have not run into that problem before. Um, Are you able to mute me? I am able to mute you. The difficulty would be that you may not, I mean, you likely won't be able to unmute yourself. Right, okay. But I can watch to see if your lips are moving. No, no. <laughs> All right. As long as it doesn't keep me mute, uh, unmuted, as long as it doesn't cause too much trouble. Okay, so we're moving on back then uh, uh, to the appendix items. 
we've reviewed that every other orange heading that's got a Roman numeral is listed and correct. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. And this is a standard document added as an appendix every year, a report from county. This is John Gladwell. Marcus, is it, is it, is it possible to make that on page 23, that first appendix a little bit bigger so it's easier to, to read in a printed report? So um, Caitlin and I worked uh, extensively on this and we got it as large as we can get it um, without it totally being even more grainy. It comes, okay. from, it comes from the treasure tax collector as a JPEG and it's not a very high resolution um, photo as it is. So you're okay. getting the largest that we can make it without it breaking up. <laughs> oh, and Travis, one more question regarding the, that report. For clarification, the TOT that's listed there, that is strictly for the county, right? And it does not include the cities? This is the county's TOT, correct. So that's just TOT collected in the unincorporated areas during that time period. That is correct. This is the TOT that is paid directly to the county. Hey, uh, we're moving on here, but I, I did just double check on the header thing. <laughs> Sorry. And number one, the overview, just Travis, if you want to go back up to page four, make your note. Uh, mm. It's there. It just needs to be bolded. Oh. Or Got it. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so then we're looking at current board makeup, uh, MCTC board makeup, right? And then, good advice for, um, Travis, for the MCTC board, I know there was a, a, a new member added at the last meeting, is that correct? Yes, but they have not been added by the board of, they have not been appointed by the board of supervisors, so I did not include them in this list. Okay, so they're not a lodging owner, they're, uh, it's one of the other positions? It's a regional promotional seat this oh. inland regional promotional seat. Uh -huh. And like I say, she hasn't been appointed yet by the Board of Supervisors, so I have not added her as an official member of the board. Just out of curiosity then, in the last meeting, what was the board's action regarding? The board moved to- um, To recommend to the Board of Supervisors. To, correct, gotcha. that she be, yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> And that is required in order to get someone. Can we just And I've got my I've got my notes here on your roster. I'll update your property names as we did in the first page. Okay, wait, can you hold on one second? Um, I wanna look at our term expiration dates. Shouldn't they technically be the same month and day, but different years? Um, well uh, not necessarily because uh, some were appointed in January and some were appointed in November. So it's but, based on appointment. Ooh, we'll have to look into our bylaws on that. I, are you sure there is a, a term date okay. listed regardless of when the appointment happens? That term end date? Well, I've been, working, I've been working with the clerk of the board on this and these are the dates that they have listed on the county's website and yeah um, i'm happy to go to bat again um, that's okay i'll i'll look into this um i'll read through the bylaws and see if there is a specific reference to the term date uh, start and the term date end regardless of when it's when appointment happens by the board of supervisors sure i'll put that on my to-do list <laughs> uh, but it looks like just let's see we've got when we start this process next year 
which we usually start in what November ish, December ish. November is supposed to be the first meeting. Okay. Looks like we'll be and as I recall. I believe me. typically we have started in December. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it looks like by then John Glide will be will be return will have expired. So I would like to just personally highly encourage John to reapply. And also hopefully we can spread the word and get our inland open seat and our at-large open seat filled as well. This is John Gladwell. Thanks, Marcus. Yeah, I, I plan on reapplying and uh, this is a good group. This is, wait, so more question though. John Dixon, weren't you and I appointed back onto the board at the same time? Um, boy, you're this asking last... a lot to remember anything. <laughs> I think we um, did both had to reapply this last uh, this last November. I'm just curious why we have different year end dates. Oh yeah, you know, we did. I think we I did fill in that paperwork. I, I recall that. So um, I don't know if I was re-upping for the same number of years, or if the term is fixed, isn't it? Reason for the staggering. But I'm not sure. Okay. Well, anyway, I'll look into that too. Um, if if this board's fine with the term dates on this, then let's keep. Keep looking at the other appendix items. Is that it? Yep. There's the MCTC board selection. <laughs> and this criteria is uh, is not only listed here; it's taken from. criteria listed in the, the ordinance now? It's not in the ordinance to my knowledge. It is in um, our um, bylaws. MCTC's bylaws. I see. Okay, so as MTCC as MTCC as MT, MCTC is the one and potentially only organization that can make a recommendation the non-lodging seats on the MCTC board, then that's why this lives in the bylaws. Is that correct? That would be my my understanding, yes. Okay. There is no other organization that can make a nomination or recommendation for a non-lodging seat on the MCTC board? That is correct. Seventeen organizational and financial profile study. This is a document that was established by uh, BMC or by the. Um, no, this is from Des Destination Marketing uh, International (DMAI). This is the financial study that we use to compare ourselves against annually. Wonderful. Really good information. Um, I'm just wondering why it's. 2017 why it's not more up to date they um, they don't do it annually they do it every three years i see so next year we'll have one that says 2020 so we used uh 18 19. yeah hopefully that's so they did this for 2017 in 2018 so in 21 we'll have a new one because they did the study in 2018 for 2017. Question uh, regarding this list right here. It says membership. Um, what is this membership referring to? So lots of organizations are membership-based organizations as well. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're like chambers of commerce as well as a destination marketing organization. So how does this relate to our, our DMO? Well, that particular part doesn't. Okay. No. But it's a part of their study. And I can't edit this 
document here because it's not ours to edit. Of course. So yeah. I just put forward their information. Wonderful. Marcus, this is Caitlin. Um, I pulled up the bylaws so that I could answer that question for you. Um, yeah. uh, go ahead. The members of the bid advisory board shall serve two year terms with two members appointed in every even numbered year and three members appointed in every odd numbered year. Each member appointed shall formally begin their term on the November 1st, closest to the date of their appointment by the Board of Supervisors. Okay, so knowing that, uh... so Caitlin, maybe you and I can work with Atlas um, in the clerk's office to get that the terms and endings organized properly. Well, I'm feeling like maybe uh, if, if we feel confident enough, John and John, to correct Appendix 3, the Bid Advisory Board, Bid Advisory Board roster, and then <clears throat> the corrections on the website or, or any site that references the board makeup could use that as its benchmark to, uh, to correct it. That is, if we feel confident that we could make sure this is this is accurate. So from what Caitlin just read, um, it does seem to be that if the term starts on November 1st, then it would end on um, September October 31st. Yes, thank you. It would end on Halloween two years later. Um, Marcus, this is John Gladwell. So um, do we just want to change the dates then is what you're suggesting? Yes. That is what I'm suggesting. And if indeed and, John Dixon and I were both appointed this last uh, in the January meeting in, uh, of the Board of Supervisors, then our term would in fact end um, our term would in fact end October. That would have been 2019. Our term would have started November 2019. So, so you're thinking that both should end on November 1st of 21. October 31st of 2021. Yes, 21. October 31st, yeah. Okay, so is there any way to confirm that? Like, you know, so we can just put it in the report now or do we uh, wanna make a note to check it and adjust it if we're able to confirm before we approve the report? Or? That is the question. I mean, it depends on whether we feel confident that we're reading this correctly and that, in fact, is the case, or uh, or we leave it as is, as it matches the county's website, and we wait till county council can advise. Um, but once again, like you know, this report comes from us, um, and you know, obviously taking information and data from, from other sources, but. Uh, I don't feel that it would be inappropriate for us to adjust those terms to reflect what we, our understanding of the term ending date to be versus leaving yeah. it on knowing it is potentially incorrect. Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with changing it to both expiring October 31st, 2021 for both your guys' term uh, dates. And I guess mine would be expiring October 31st of 2020 so that all three calendar days are the same, just the years are different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, John Dixon, are you amenable to that? Yeah, that sounds like a, cor sounds correct and a good uh, change, yeah. Uh, so are you clear on those changes, Travis? Yes, yes. John Dixon, term expires October. 31st, 2021. Same with Marcus, term expiration date. And then if I could um, suggest that um, we leave them temporarily, um, the board's terms are typically considered correct. I'd like to touch base with the clerk of the board before we 
make any finalized changes. Okay. And if you guys agree to that, we can always add that in um, to your um, motion at the end that you'll approve the updated dates when we've received confirmation from the board. Yeah, all right, I'm fine with that. This is John Gwai, well, that sounds good to me. I agree, John Dick. Okay, great. Um, moving on to the remaining appendixes, which are the TOT collection forms and the bid collection form. That clearly lists, where is it? Average daily right rate the top. and occupancy percentage. Okay, um, those are the last two appendix items. So I guess we are then looking to entertain a motion to uh, ex accept this report as a final report with the pending edits that we've given Travis to input and also the correction regarding the bid roster if the county council deems it correct. Well, I'd move to, to um, accept this as final with um, approved amendments. And I will second that, John. This is John Glidewell. Uh, John Dixon made the motion, and um, of course that includes the edits that Travis will incorporate after he gets his hands on the, the Word document. Great. All right. Um, any further discussion on this matter? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Caitlin will... Provide the roll call vote. When ready. John Glidewell? Yes. John Dixon? Yes. Marcus Magdalena? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. to item number seven matters from the advisory board anybody have any matters from the advisory board to discuss uh, this is john glidewell um just want to say marcus thank you for being our chair for this this year this report and even though we are dealing with a lot of unknown i feel really comfortable with the way that the report came together and i look forward to uh, figuring out how to make those adjustments once more that financial information is uh, is known in the next fiscal year. Uh, so just wanted to say thanks to you and John Dixon. It's uh, certainly a pleasure working with you on this as well. Thank you, John Lagman. Appreciate it. I'd echo that. Thanks, everybody, for all your work. Um, you know, one thing else also to note, I think, is that historically, um, well, way back, the CEO back at the time was called CEO of Visit Mendocino County, and the Bid Advisory Board um, worked on this together as we did here uh, this time around. Um, and there was a period of time where the board itself sort of took over more of the, the writing of it, and it was a little bit of sort of separation of powers, if you will. I think back in the time when, when things were different. And I'm just bringing it up now because I think there's a level of trust that we have um, with, you know, with you, Travis, and with the staff um, that we're working like this sort of again, if you will. Um, and so I just wanted to acknowledge that and appreciate, you know, let you know we appreciate you and thank you for your time, but also know that how much we, we trust the data that's in here. You've really done a lot of the legwork, and um, and I just want to acknowledge that and thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you, John Dixon. And uh, yeah, and I thought it was important to note, and uh, I did make some comment to that in the executive summary, because uh, I agree with you, John Dixon, that um, the process for getting this report done, you know, um, as, as it seems like it's gotten back to a very, a very good process. And being that we're all on the board volunteers and we have our other businesses to run, um, it is more practical for um, for BMC staff to, to kind of do the legwork of, of filing the report and, and allowing us to review and comment and vet and edit it and whatnot. So, um, and I do know that takes time away from BMC ED and staff, takes time away from them being able to promote the county, but um, as this is an important part of getting the bid renewed, it's important to take some time to do it. So, yeah, I think, I think maybe put a finer point on it for me, it's, it was, it's a collaboration. I mean, we're clearly, you know, and Travis was referring to us even today, you know, whatever you guys want is fine thing. So, you know, I think just again, acknowledging that, that we don't ever want, we, we, well, let's say a different way. Um, I think promoting collaboration always is, you know, everybody's sort of pulling their weight and doing their, what they're supposed to be doing, but um, allowing for input from everybody, um, it just is more of a collaboration than a, uh, tail wagging the dog, if you will, you know, or something like that where out of balance. This felt um, like a good way to get this done. And again, just appreciate it very much where we've come after all this time. So it's, it's a good group, and I'm happy to do it again next year. Thanks. Great. Thanks, John. Hopefully, we'll have the full board next year. Um, <laughs> yeah. Though I wonder if having three board members made it a little more streamlined. <laughs> but uh, but no, of course, it's best to have the board in its entirety as it's supposed to be. So um, we'll continue to look for members that can be on the board. Um, so uh, Travis, uh, I believe that has the chair been present at both Board of Supervisors meetings, the first one where the draft is, or the, the, the final uh, report is uh, the, the final meeting is when um, it, you should be there. The first one, it's on consent, and they generally don't pull it. I will be there. Uh, if you'd like to be there with me, that would be fantastic. Okay. Um, I welcome that, but it looks like we'll be Zooming those, so it shouldn't be too difficult. Um, but uh, generally, uh, the second meeting where it's approved would be when you'd want to stay stand up and, and say whatever you'd like to say to the Board of Supervisors. And most likely when the soups will have questions about the report too, right? Correct. Okay, sounds good. I'll um, do that. And uh, can you can you provide, uh, or Caitlin, um, make sure you provide updates via email to us as to the meetings, the Board of Supervisors meetings that, the, that this report will be addressed in? Yes, we can do that. Um, the Board of Supervisors, um, we'll have to put you on as a meeting participant. So when it goes, if you are to be speaking, you will um, participate in a Zoom meeting from an email directly from them. And to my understanding, it has to be submitted by 8 a.m. the morning of the meeting. Is that right? Uh, what do you need submitted? Oh. Well, a, record, a request to be part of the Zoom meeting, uh, when does that request have to be submitted to? to um, planning and building can likely take care of that request for you um, and get a participant ID for you. Okay. Great. But the email itself will come from the clerk of the board. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. My pleasure. So, um, question, John Dixon here. So I guess other to-dos after this for us are to find these two other board members for next time around. Um, you know, Marcus, you sort of acknowledge that. And I think we we should do what we can on that. And the other is, you know, maybe using it next time around the MCLA list or whatever sort of organizational thing that sort of for lodging comes out of what's happening with the COVID. Um, pandemic and sort of lodging coming together. I just feel like I'm wondering if in these meetings that we just make sure people are more aware of them 
and sort of what we're doing. And yes, we want to be streamlined, and yes, these are public, and you know, even this is recorded. I understand that, but letting people sort of know about our processes and sort of uh, might, might be something else we might consider um, using that MCLA list for from everything from supervisor meetings when there's lodging things to to this kind of a thing um, and you know uh, MCTC board meetings and things like that I, I think it seems to me um, that people are coming together and, and there's new operators and there's you know people um, that might even want to participate um, on this board and even the MCTC board in the future. Um, and those of us that have been around a while, you know, we know it's a challenge getting more people involved. So I think, you know, as we work on the things we're working on as lodging together, uh, we can consider some of the people who are stepping up already uh, to be on COVID, you know, response team uh, protocol groups, you know what I mean? Sort of um, talking about this opportunity for next year as well as other things. Um, I think it's all kinds of good stuff can come out of that. Um, so let's keep our, you know, keep that in our in our minds as we think about next year. So when do we start this again? Can we just before we adjourn and are done here? When do we come back together again next time? Well, let's start the process um, of doing that. I believe we talked about it being in December. The first meeting usually is scheduled for December. Is that right? I believe so. I think that sounds right. It wouldn't hurt to maybe start start the, if it doesn't um, if it doesn't violate our bylaws or anything. Just to, to shoot for a November meeting. Um, typically by November, hopefully the new board members that will be appointed will have been appointed by the um, board of supervisors by then, and uh, an end of November meeting might be the best place to start. I think. Travis, you um, and your team were working on and maybe have it like a master calendar of some sort. Um, you know, for board meetings and all these things. And I don't know if the bid timeline is in that yet, but is it, you know? Uh, let me confirm that really quickly. Uh, I believe it is. I believe it used, used to be at least. Um, I'm just going to pull up the calendar here. Real quick. Uh, okay. One of the things that you know about this business is that all these things came around in an annual cycle and so nothing should be a surprise but sometimes it's right. hard to remember we're doing different things and so when i learned that you guys were doing that master calendar actually um using it i was so happy to hear it so so i'm just looking it up in my corn binder give me just a moment uh, tab seven Missing your head at the moment for some reason. Oh, it's yeah. Sorry, I got too far away from the camera. Uh, bid, yes, the bid advisory is on the master calendar. Great. And is is that that Go ahead, John Dixon. Right, sorry. I just wonder, is it showing December as a where we start the process? It actually shows November is the first meeting, November, December, January, and then final in March. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so let's try to get back on that timeline. And um, Travis, is that master calendar referenceable at all to the public on the website or anything, or is that an internal document? It's an internal document um, used for just staff um, and board organization. Um, yeah, it's not on the website. This is Caitlin from you know, Planning and um, Building. As John was speaking, one question popped up that we might want to um, look into addressing, and that is with the change of uh, adding campgrounds to the bid, does that change who qualifies to sit on this board, um, adding in any campground owners? Are there any privately owned campgrounds? Yes, there's there's a handful of privately owned campgrounds, and yes, they would be considered lodging operators, so they would uh, fall into um, yeah, they can definitely sit on this this board. Okay, great, and that doesn't need to be changed or referenced any other place than we've already suggested. No, because no, the because the ordinance is going to include them as lodging operators. Okay. All right, maybe we, can, we can pursue a campground owner. 
Yeah, I mean, what we would have to do is look at sort of there's at large, which could be anywhere in the county. And then what's the other one missing? I know we talked about it. Inland. It, it is inland. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Well, we can, like I said, there's, there's a lot of people involved right now with lodging stuff, so maybe we can, you know, keep our eyes open, talk to some people. We have to get them, uh, they have to apply and be approved then before November. That's great. Right. Elin, what is the, uh, are you familiar with the application timeline? I'm sorry, Marcus, was that directed towards me? Yes, Caitlin, are you familiar with the timeline for the application uh, and a, an appointment of a bid advisory board member? I believe that the applications um, can be submitted as early as September. Um, and the appointments take place, I believe, at the first November board meeting. Okay. But I'm not 100% positive on that. Oh, that sounds right. I think John and I were under a deadline to get our applications in by like September 30th, if I can recall. And then, and then yeah, it would be on it. It would either be a end of October Board of Supervisors meeting or early November. If uh, we could touch base for just a moment back on the start date of the next cycle um, for the report that you're interested in. The past three years of my paperwork here um, show that all of the meetings have started at the beginning of December. Um, did you want to start this upcoming year at the beginning of November? Yeah, what is our what is our format for our meeting? Is it like the first, second, two, what is it, the second Tuesday? What did we adopt on the second Tuesday of the month or something? Uh, there is no specific date. Um, no, we all or kind of. Week, day of the week in the bid bylaws, um, right, right. only the start and end time. So you can make that calendar be whatever day of the week works. Um, planning and building, however, typically cannot arrange for um, clerk support of the meeting on Thursdays. Okay. Um, or at least on um, every other Thursday. And we don't have our calendar um, for next year uh, done yet. <laughs> Um, but every other Thursday is a planning commission meeting or an ALEC meeting or both. And then a board of supervisors meetings are always typically regularly scheduled on Tuesdays? They're typically on Tuesdays with some exceptions and they have their own calendar that's adopted every year. Um, I want to say that that calendar is released at the last December meeting or at the beginning of January. Okay. And then Travis, the MCTC meeting is currently scheduled on Tuesdays? Tuesdays. Like second Tuesday, first Tuesday? It's, it's the second Tuesday of the month at 1 p.m. Okay, but if you adopt the recommendation for report, that might change. That may change, yes. <laughs> if uh, they adopt. <laughs> my guess would be either to change to Monday to, or Wednesday. Uh, uh, John, Dixon, John Glidewell, um, I'll, if you're an amendment uh, agreeable to um, a Monday, I'll just say Monday, tentatively in November. Uh, we'll look at a calendar here. Oh, wait, no. This is John Glidewell, and just you know, if we decide on a day, that's great. Mondays typically for me tend to be a little bit busier, so I appreciate it. Uh, having Tuesdays or Thursdays or something like that. Um, I mean, I'm fine with Wednesday or Friday too. Mondays tend to be my busiest days and I would want to make sure that I have had enough time to really commit to reviewing the material in Fort Met. Of course, uh, a very first meeting might may be a little bit different as we're just kind of getting our, uh, our kind of our basis again. So uh, that would just be my preference. I want to make sure I put that in there. Okay. Um, my suggestion then is we tentatively schedule a meeting as of now for the second 
Wednesday in November 2020, which would be um, November 11th. Does that work for either? What does that work um, for everybody? I believe that November 11th is Veterans Day. <laughs> and county offices will be closed. Okay. Uh, How about the 10th, November 10th? November 10th is the MCTC board meeting. And potentially a board of supervisors meeting. I mean, we could we could just shoot for that date. And I don't know if it will, you know, I, we, or I think it's important to make a best effort to not create meetings that overlap with other related board meetings. But if we have no other option. Uh, How about Thursday the 12th? Kaylin, Thursday the 12th? I, I don't know if there will be a planning commission meeting that day. Oh, that's right. um, Sorry. Friday the 13th. That will be a that, that will be a, you can't forget. <laughs> <laughs> and look, when, once when the day gets closer to we can um, we'll have other factors, potential people or potential uh, potentially, hopefully uh, a board member sat by then as their term would start on November 1st, hopefully they'll get appointed sometime near November 1st. So uh, let's, you want to just say tentatively, November 13th, Friday, and then as the date gets closer, we can uh, look at everybody's schedules and adjust. But I think we, if we do it within the first week or two of November and it has to change, we still have uh, two more weeks in November to consider. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this is John Gladwell, fine, fine with me. Yeah, John Dixon. John Dixon, was that a yes? Yeah, John Dixon agrees. Yes, thank you. Okay, November 13th, Friday the 13th, is our next scheduled meeting. And um, election day is November 3rd. Okay. I'm just saying that we'll, we'll know something at that point about something. Great. Okay. Uh, any other any other matters? You know, motion for adjournment. Um, this is John Glywell. Sorry, just wanted to, for the record, before we finish, um, again say thanks to Travis. I I, didn't, I failed to mention him in our my first round of appreciation, but I, Travis, I really appreciate what you've done for this group, the working relationship, like John mentioned. And then not to go unnoticed, uh, Caitlin, thank you, and Adrian and Jim in the background who has been working behind the scenes. Uh, really good group. Thanks again. Thank you. All right. I will second the motion for adjournment. I don't think we had a first. I'll, first, I'll, I'll, make, I'll move to adjourn, and John, it sounds like John Glywell's second. <laughs> yeah, John Glywell here second. All right, great. Meeting is adjourned, 3.02 p.m. Thank you, everyone, so much. Have a great afternoon. I will uh, make these changes, get them over to Caitlin, and send copies to each of you by uh, blind carbon copy. Great. And then let us know uh, the meeting that will be presented to the board of supervisors. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Everyone. Have a great Bye. afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Why -bye. Bye -bye. is my, my Zoom is not working? Marcus, did you get it figured out? Okay. <laughs>
Well, I ended the meeting for everybody just as you were saying that, so I thought I'd give you a quick call. <laughs> okay, all right. Absolutely, my pleasure. Bye. Oh, yeah. Oh. I will absolutely pass that along. It'd be my pleasure. All right. You have a good day, and I will mark in my calendar to set up our meeting for November. All right. You too. Bye. County. Hi, Travis. It's Caitlin. You there? Hello. Hello. Oh. Hello. It's Caitlin. Hi. How's it going? It's going. Um, I have a question for you. Question me. The colors in your um report. Do you yeah. happen to have the hex numbers for your colors? I can get it for you. Because I'd, um, I'd, I'd really love the um, colors that you use in your uh, charts and graphs and so forth. Which colors? The, the, the orange and the green? Is it green? Oh, oh it looks it looks blue on my laptop. So it's kind of a greenish color. Yeah, if I could get those, that would be really fantastic. Numbers for our orange. I'm writing this down. And teal green that in the graph of the report. Okay, I just asked um, my marketing coordinator if he has those. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I have to, I figured I'd ask you to be faster and easier than me trying to get to the right programs and if they have the programs on the computer to pull it out. And so. All right. Um, what are you going to use it for? I'm making you a present. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and, okay, he's typing right now. So I'll just email you as soon as I get the color. All right, sounds good. Thank you so much. Thank you, Caitlin. My pleasure. Bye. Bye.